Hey, what's going on guys? Coming again here. Uh, before anything else, I'd like to thank all of you guys for uh, taking part in this voting. So now it's crystal clear on how exactly would you like me to uh, cover uh, the chess program and currently building to run on what I call CMK computers. So thanks, thanks for voting. And I think that at this point the poll can be actually closed. So let's get rid of that. And now before we start uh, diving into the new piece of code that I've written in order uh, to, to make uh, my chess program uh, a bit closer to the state when hopefully it would get released one day. So uh, the major issue I started uh, falling into is the horrible lack of memory. Well, even though I didn't exhaust the memory yet, but uh, the, the, the dynamics of... Uh, wasting the memory uh, during writing some code gave me an idea that I'm gonna be running out of memory quite pretty soon. So uh, what I tried to do is to push my SIMK computer to the limits and I've managed to free uh, all the memory I could basically in order to uh, get all the available memory that I can actually have. So uh, either Arduino uh, Uno or Arduino Nano uh, so here in the emulator we have Arduino Uno, but on the real hardware, uh, uh, the real hardware I have uh, based on Arduino Nano. Uh, but again, like the amount of RAM uh, is the same, 2K of RAM in both boards. Uh, so the first thing I, that I did, uh, I moved all the strings uh, into so-called prog mem. So now they are no longer wasting the SRAM, which is the internal uh, static random access memory uh, of the uh, this microcontroller uh, on the Arduino board and uh, that allowed me to expand the map a little bit and again like uh, so currently uh, in the emulator I have 1400 uh, bytes here so 1.4 K RAM but uh, on the real hardware I'm still uh, I'm actually using 1.5 1.5 uh, 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 bytes, uh, k bytes uh, of RAM, and if I if I use the same amount in here in the emulator, then for some reason uh, it just doesn't it stops working properly, and just uh, it seems like the memory used for local variables apparently gets just smashed, and the results in, in the output when I put it into serial port just gets very uh, very very weird. So here uh, the, uh, the the most the highest value uh, I could have provided is this. 1400s bytes but again like on the real hardware i'm still capable of uh keeping this 1500 bytes which is which is pleasant which is actually 50 bytes more for instructions when uh, uh when compiled when transferred from uh, ascii characters to to the actual machine codes the machine code integers all right so now uh again like for for the real hardware version i have uh 750 bytes for instructions and 750 bytes for uh variables and the stack at the end and uh for the simulator i have respectively 700s right 700s of for instructions and 700s for uh, variables and uh and the mem uh, and the stack so what I've changed in the source code uh, now currently uh, board start is no longer a 200 hexadecimal which was 512 bytes decimal but now it's 2 ee which uh, is uh, 17 uh, which is oh my god uh, 750 right and uh, despite the size of the RAM or the eventual size of the RAM still well actually it should be well uh, from from uh, again like yeah uh, I won't be able to so, so this the version in the simulator is limit is, is can load only 700s uh, can can convert only 700s uh, by its machine codes instructions so it can only take 1400s ASCII characters as an input and uh, turn them into seven 700s of actual bytes so if I exhaust the sites the size of 700 bytes in that case well probably I'm not going to be able to run it on a simulator anymore or or maybe I just need to go for some hacks or I have no idea how exactly am I going to be dealing with that at the moment to be honest but anyway uh, uh, I still have this 750 bytes for instructions uh, on the real hardware and as far as I'm debugging on the real hardware that hopefully 
should be enough. Well, uh, again, like at the moment, so just to give an idea how many bytes I've wasted already. So currently, oh my God, did I pay? Oh man, I've already wasted. Oh man. Oh, 496 bytes. I didn't, I, I didn't even see when, when I, when I wasted so many bytes it's almost yeah it's more than a half already oh yeah th this is very devastating guys t t t <laughs> to be honest this is really really devastating so yeah uh well obviously well okay just uh just to give you an idea what i currently have uh okay so just just want to run this uh I don't know. Uh, I, I would probably first start demonstrating this on the real hardware, even though you don't see the the real hardware. Uh, still, uh, I can show this uh, the serial monitor that talks to the real hardware. And let me just reset my CMK computer here and loading the bytes and done. And now I'm pressing the start button to execute the program. Oh, sorry. Oh, this is not chess. This is my Chrome Dino game. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is not so bad. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, it just was... No, it's only 286 bytes. Oh, my God. I thought that was already 496. Okay, not so bad in this case. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was tough. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought, where, where, where the heck did I have? <laughs> 200 bytes more yeah that was fun so yeah let me try this one more time and run so here here is the output uh that came back from my arduino so i have already set up all the pieces so every time uh well if i run this again so to just clear the output here for instance and if i run this again uh it just clears the board so if even if the pieces were like uh, here or somewhere like changing uh, changed from the initial position still it, what it does, it clears all the cells, then it uh, sets up the pieces, and then it sets up that P square table. So here on the right, we have this P square table, and you might be wondering why do we have this queens and white queens and white kings here? Well, uh, those are not white kings and white queens. I was just trying to save some bytes uh, to avoid writing extra code to print this properly. So literally, uh, white queen is 15, and white king uh, represents the value of uh 11 if i'm not mistaken i don't even remember how, how how many um b f uh yeah so 15 in the center and b uh b in so 10 a 11 yeah so uh these squares are worth 15 points and these squares uh, are worth uh, 11 points and that's the bare minimum p square table I came up with uh, so now I have uh, this huge initialization routine so starting from here and down here that actually does allow me to set up all the pieces uh, onto the chessboard right so yeah um, currently yeah, and here I just printed. Uh, I just called the debug uh, instruction just to make sure that I didn't didn't smash the the stack pointer. So it still kind of like uh, points to like have the same number of push and pop instructions. So yeah, in uh, here finally I have uh, I have uh, the board being set up, and now another uh, another resource that I kind of like keep for. Uh, for, the, for for times when there won't be enough space and, and I swear I will run into that quite pretty soon so if I just get rid of the entire print board function which is not essential for a chess program to run and if I actually uh, do not call this uh, where is that oh my god where is yeah and if I just don't call this print uh, print board so uh, we had uh, 286 and without uh, it's actually 218 so let's let me take the calculator so how much did I save from that so 286 minus 218 yeah 68 bytes not much really but yeah this 68 bytes 
yeah they might be uh very very important one day so yeah well anyway let me just uh restore everything back and uh well obviously exactly the, the same thing well for now at least it still can be uh, can run in the emulator so if we just start the execution here and paste and type command to load the data and send um and then run yeah it just now it takes longer because there are just more bytes and it's a bit of a pain but anyway so yeah uh now it's literally the same thing so yeah for now it's still compatible with this simulator uh okay so uh i don't really want to dive that deep into the implementation because like it was <laughs> the previous time with or the print board routine because all it does literally is just uh i'm just I i'm having this uh i have the black pieces the black pawns white pieces white pawns and what i do all of the time i just uh, synchronize the pointer uh that points to so the b register serves in, as an offset right so I'm using LDA and SDA instructions. So L LDA, uh, uh, well, uh, actually, well, uh, hold on a sec, yeah. So this part uh, is trivial. It just resets uh, the entire board array. So all the 128 elements get set to zero. So it's not, nothing really interesting here. And here, uh, what I do, uh, I'm just uh, loading uh, the pointer to black, uh, to, to the A register, uh, the address of black pieces, then black pawns, then white pawns. And then, uh, I, uh, well, when I encounter the terminating byte after each of them, I just go to, the, to initializing the next piece, uh, the, the next piece of data, the next chunk of data. Uh, but before that, uh, I'm also setting these values to the, uh, to the corresponding rank. So rank 8, rank 7, rank 2, and rank 1. So we have rank 8 uh, be, uh, corresponds to the black pieces, rank 7 to black pawns rank 2 to white pawns, rank 1 to white pieces. And then I just do manually set up, uh, so here, so th this uh, this ugly piece of code actually allows me to set up this, uh, the values for p square table. So I thought I thought that this would be like the, the least evil because if I would tr ever try to start writing a routine to do this automatically, that takes enormous number of bytes. So I, think, I thought it would be just less, the least evil just to, uh, uh, initialize the most significant squares I'm interested in and this already should be enough to give the pieces an idea where to get developed so hopefully this is gonna be enough and uh, this is actually all I wanted to tell you in this video guys apart from one very interesting and very important thing and especially this is very important from the chess history uh, from the computer history from the chess history and legacy perspective so uh, I don't know, well, uh, for those of you guys who are about of my age or even younger, uh, this won't tell you much. But for those who are, who are around, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years older than me, I'm 33, uh, the de December the 1st, I would be 34 years old. So for those who are around, uh, starting from 50 years old and older, you probably, if you had a look at this computer, probably this did remind something to you. And, you know, like, uh, when I was building this, I had a feeling that I'm building, I'm trying to reinvent the wheel, and there is, uh, there should be something that already exists out there, uh, which is similar in design and application and generally in, in the concept. And imagine my surprise uh, when I came up with Kim One computer. So it's based on my, my favorite uh, MOS 6502 processor, uh, and... Uh, it has a uh, keyboard to enter uh, hexadecimal numbers, uh, to, to enter 6502 machine codes as the hexadecimal numbers, and it has uh, the six segments, uh, the, uh, the six, uh, uh, six parts of seven segments LED displays. So only, so the first four are used to display the address, and the second two, 16-bit six, six address, and the second two digits are used to display um, the value at that 16-bit address and there are there were like books for this computer programs and one of the most 
fascinating things from the chess programming perspective that the very first commercial program that has been ever written, I believe, in the history in general, it was uh, Micro Chess by Peter, Gen Peter, Peter Jennings, and it was uh, written exactly for Kim One computer. And they, there were there were even some videos on YouTube how they were actually trying to run that uh, on Kim One. And this is absolutely fascinating, the most probably the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. So yeah, um, uh, when I saw this, I realized that this is what I was trying to build. And well, obviously, uh, like uh, there are some enthusiasts who actually are bu building this Kim One even nowadays, and there are some kits available. Even six five zero two processor is still being manufactured by uh, I'm not sure by what company, uh, American West, West Western American Digital. Or, I don't remember really. It's somewhere in US, too far away from me. So anyway, uh, but the idea that people even try to and to successfully uh, kind of recreate these computers from scratch even nowadays. But I came up with an absolutely astonishing project, very, very cool one, very fantastic. So uh, a guy, I don't know what's the guy's name, but he built a Kim One computer uh, based on Arduino. So literally what he did, so here is a tiny little Arduino. It's, it's not Arduino Nano, even though it looks like that but it's probably it's called Arduino Mini Pro or something like that but it doesn't matter really it's uh, they I, I believe they're the same so uh, the idea is that here on this Arduino he is running the 6502 processor emulator and then he hooks up the hardware that he has created and eventually it's uh, Kim One comfortable and behaves uh, uh, as, as the author claims it behaves exactly the same uh, in, in the latest, uh, the latest releases even featured uh, compatibility for Apple One computer, which is one of my favorite computers ever. So yeah, um, this is this is like I don't know, so cool. And apart, uh, along with anything else, uh, he actually does uh, maintain a few ROMs for. Uh, there is a ROM for Kim One. There is a ROM for Apple One, and uh, there are. Uh, as the, the, there is a tiny assembler by Steve Wozniak, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Apple co-founder, right? So, uh, and also one of the most amazing things that there is the micro chess. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he, he has recompiled that slide a little bit, uh, but he claims that micro chess is actually running on this thing. So, uh, the first commercial program, yeah. And again, like, uh, there is a bit of uh, unclear. Uh, then in regards to like micro micro chess by Peter Jennings is uh, is not open source. It's kind of like uh, proprietary software. However, the guy who was dealing with this project had the source code, and there is the source code in his source files. He just said like, "Don't tell anyone," like <laughs> something like that. Uh, and I thought that maybe it's not really okay to to do this. But then I, I found uh, then I actually found a PDF file on chess programming Wikipedia. And there is an entire manual uh, uh, related to uh, micro chess by Peter Gen uh, Jennings. And uh, I saw the listings, the 6502 assembly listings and the machine codes there as well. So probably, I believe after 45 years, it is open source now. I believe that <laughs> there won't be any lawsuits if, uh, if this gets exposed into public, like running, making tutorials about this like that. So, well, if I had, if I had Peter Jennings uh, mail, I would, definitely uh, dare to to mail him to ask his permission for this and well maybe if i find if i if i find that that uh, i would be happy to do so well i really want i, I really doubt that peter jennings was <laughs> would ever be watching this video well but anyway sir if you watch this video <laughs> please let me know in the commentaries if you're okay if i uh if one day i will make a tutorial on how your chess program works and try to mimic this experience well so yeah um as uh, as you have already as you as you probably already have guessed, guys, that the next uh, the next update that I'm gonna be making to my uh, CMK computer is I, I would try to run this uh, 6502 emulator on my computer because uh, again, like this similarity having exactly almost exactly the same key uh, keypad and the the display well at least conceptually even though i have the lcd display it's kind of bigger it does does a little more uh, it, it brings more opportunities but anyway conceptually i believe conceptually they're really kind of similar so uh this is the next uh 
thing I'm gonna be doing after uh, completing this chess program. Again, like uh, I can't promise that this chess program would ever be completed because uh, again, like uh, I just uh, you know like uh, micro chess takes around uh, almost uh, one thousand of bytes, so nine hundred and twenty or something like that. But uh, the six five zero two assembler or and machine code, the six five zero two architecture is, is is incomparably better as, uh, as opposed to th this imagery CPU that I've created here. So because of the indirect address and because of instructions allowing to manipulate uh, uh, not only uh, to manipulate all the registers up, like almost the same way, also having three registers a part of two registers and, and many others. Uh, and probably yeah, uh, because of having the signed values like signed integer arithmetics uh, being available out of the box. Uh, yeah, I think that it's just much better. And assuming that instruction set, uh, I believe that having a chess program programming under uh, 1000 bytes is is very cool. It's, it's yeah, it's fantastic, but, but it's OK. It's nothing special, really, because uh, Oscar Toledo has written his chess program uh, in a boot sector and with uh, nitty gritty hacks, it took only somewhere 320 bytes or something like that. So it's not even 512 bytes, but so some, somewhere around between uh, 320 or up to 400 bytes, like so something like that. So it's it's very miserable. Well, but again, like the x86 assembly is even more powerful. But but anyway, uh, I just wanted to give you an idea that mm, this amount of memory of one k of memory is is okay to write a chess program. If you have the uh, the powerful the powerful enough instruction set, however, I'm not really sure that my instruction set is is actually powerful enough to write a chess program. So, in regards to this project, I have no idea how far would I be able to proceed. Uh, like uh, uh, before I run out of uh, before I run uh, out of the memory. But anyway, uh, I'm not dropping this because uh, it's really like you know like, uh, writing a chess program for whatever i don't know hardware is is kind of like uh really pushing the, that hardware to the limits and i'm, I'm really wondering mm, what what this uh what this imagery cpu i've created is actually uh what's the limit of this cpu so how how far can i go with that so you, you, even if i won't be able to come up with a complete chess program still it's, it's going to be incredibly interesting to see like at least uh, I would be able to generate the moves. Uh, I hope so because I don't even know how I'm going to be dealing with the unsigned numbers to deal uh, the positive and negative offsets for my uh, for my mode generation purposes and things like that. So, yeah, uh, no idea at the moment. I just have I have the overall picture of how the engine architecture is going to look like, but I have no idea uh, when it comes to the uh, particular implementation wh whether it would be enough memory for me or not. And again, like if, the, if there would be enough memory for running this in real hardware, it might not be that enough to run on this emulator, and really want to make them kind of like uh, uh, compatible, right? And one last thing that uh, when we're talking about this uh, Kim One or Apple One emulation on Arduino uh, it's still possible to have the version that the emulator the emulated version in Tinkercad even though it would be a bit laggy but still it would be cycle accurate which is cool and I think that that would be really uh, like uh, the best thing that we would be <laughs> uh, capable to have basically right and again like writing chess in 6502 assembly is like I don't know what what may be better than writing chess engine in six five zero two assembly. So well, maybe uh, maybe I would even uh, ask Harm Gert Miller one day to share his uh, six five zero two program. Also, Peter, if I'm not mistaken, that's that's name. Um, but anyway, so six five zero two is is legendary, and uh, breaking down the chess that I've written in that assembly is is going to be incredibly interesting. So that's the chess history and legacy that I think that. Uh, nothing can be more important than that. Well, okay, guys, this is it from my side. So uh, let's see how far would I be able to go with my current instruction set. And again, like I really hope that after this project, uh, we're gonna be working with the 6502 chess programs, which are the foundation of the entire chess programming and the legendary programs are available there. So it would be definitely interesting to have a look at this. So this is it from my side. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, and take care.